So, the last chapter for this week, gang, chapter 30, we've just had some disturbing news that Mum actually has her own complications. Not prepared for this. So let's see where the story takes us now. I dream that the house is filling up with water. I'm at one end of it and Mum's at the other. She's awake and we try to swim towards each other. But just as we are about to grab each other's hands, seaweed wraps around my feet like slimy fingers and pulls me back again. I try again and again. Each time I get a little bit closer and I grab onto her tighter. But I can never get close enough. Eventually, the seaweed has wrapped itself around my body like a caterpillar's cocoon and I can barely see mum anymore, barely see anything. I call out her name, but no sound comes out. My voice is lost in the bubbles. We're in Dr Origi's office later in the day, the same office Amanda took me to just a few hours ago. I sit in the same chair, but it doesn't seem big this time. It seems just right, like I've grown up Far more than I should have in the last few hours. Like I'm growing as the conversation ticks on. I feel groggy from the events of the morning and my eyes are still swollen from crying. We are going to run some tests, Dr. Origi explains. The doctor sounds like she's speaking in slow motion. I watch her lips form the words that make my stomach twist in knots. And when she's done, it's like everything is moving in double speed to catch up. What sort of tests? Dad asks, frowning. We agreed that I would come in today, that I needed to know. But Dr. Irigi looks at me nervously, like she doesn't want to say the next words in front of me. She opens her mouth, then closes it, rubbing her chin with her forefinger and thumb. Eventually she settles, arms resting on her desk. We are testing for brain stem death, she explains. Death. Death. The word thumps in my mind like something slamming hard against my skull until I bury my face in my hands. It doesn't go away and I want to scratch at my skin, my hair, to get it out. But it's too rooted inside me to simply pluck out and all I can do is cry. There's a bit of fumbling while Dr. Origi gets me a tissue and Dad's, Dad pulls his chair closer to mine. He holds my hand while the doctor continues to explain. Apparently mum is no longer in a normal coma. The one where you think the person might wake up. The complications mean that they have to check her brain function to make sure that everything's working. And they've put mum on the ventilator again so she's not breathing on her own anymore. But I know her brain is working. I've been swimming in her memories as I've played the game. How could all this be happening if she isn't alive? Because you spilled the perfume. You ruined the game. I push the thoughts aside and focus instead on what I can do to fix things. I tried to look up the perfume, but nothing came up in my search. I suppose there are no magical perfume shops online. And that's le- and what that's left in the bottle is the oily residue. Barely enough for a drop. What if I dilute it? That way it can last a bit longer. Yes, I think. Just enough to finish the game. It's getting closer. I can feel it. Dr. Origi's voice shatters through my thoughts of the past and catapults me back to the present moment with the force of an elastic band. The doctors will run a series of tests. They're a bit weird and oddly simplistic, like those science experiments you do in primary school, but on a human. They do each of the tests twice with two different doctors. The doctors then meet to discuss the results. When I ask Dr. Origi how often this happens, she says it's standard procedure for this sort of thing. When I ask her what happens if mum fails all the tests, she doesn't give me a straight answer, just looks at dad. But that tells me everything I need to know. If mum fails the tests, then it's game over. My limbs feel heavy whenever I move, like someone's tied rocks to them to weigh me down. It's like everything happening in my life is a bad dream, and I have to shake myself awake every few moments. Somehow it's the memories that feel most real to me now. Do you want to visit your mum? Dad asks but his voice sounds far away. I nod, even though I don't have the book of fairy tales to unlock the next memory. Elle has it, but I'm not ready to face her just yet. Today I want to see mum and spend time with her without worrying about having to solve puzzles. So I forget about memories and games and tests. I just sit by her bedside, pull the Wizard of Oz from my bag and read. So a really powerful chapter. It looks like mum has taken a turn for the worse and the doctors are doing tests and she could be in a serious 
situation. If her brain cells have died, it means that her 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 body's working, but her brain isn't. So even if she did wake up, she wouldn't be able to talk, speak, move. She would just be alive, but she wouldn't be able to do anything. Because remember, although we feel like our brain keeps us alive, if our, all of our organs work, we can live on without the brain. We can't do anything. We'd have to be fed through a tube. We'd never. We wouldn't be able, we'd have to, we wouldn't be able to move. People would have to move us. So that's not something you'd want for anyone in your family, is it? So, brilliant. Where do we think this story is going? We've got about 50 pages left. We've got through this really nicely since um, homeschooling. I'm really intrigued to see what happens next and see how this story concludes. Right, I would say, gang, we've probably got about two more weeks left. How exciting. We'll be finished by June half term. Right, bye-bye. Enjoy your um, weekend. Depending on when you're listening to this. See you later. Millie says bye too. She's just not turning around to say it.